How are you? Welcome back. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about snakes that are local to Adelaide and South Australia, and the ones that us catchers are most likely to be called out to attend. No matter where you live or travel in Australia, sometime in your life you're bound to encounter reptiles, in particular a snake. Chances are that the snake will be venomous and deadly to us as human beings. Today's story will focus on the three most popular snakes we get called to attend around my hometown in Adelaide. Most of you would have heard the name carpet python and got its name from the incredible carpet-like patterns on its skin. I have here two versions, a Murray Darling and a Coastal. Both amazing animals, both friendly pets of mine, and some people in the industry use the phrase dog tame because they're just like the family dog or cat. Adelaide being as cold as it gets sometimes isn't normally a place where you find these guys. As much as the Murray Darling is local to South Australia, it's unlikely you'll come across a native one within Adelaide itself. Most often than not, if you have one of these in your yard, chances are it's an escapee from somebody's collection or wound up amongst some freight coming from interstate in the back of a truck. They live on rats and mice in captivity and will also eat other reptiles and birds if they're in the wild. And as you can see by the coastal here, they're a constrictor, which means when they, they don't have venom, they bite their animal and they wrap around it and constrict it, basically crushing it to death. The first venomous species today is this amazing looking red belly black snake that we got out of a house here in Adelaide. It was uh, in amongst the uh, automated uh, sprinkler system. The red belly black snake grows to around six foot long, so obviously this is just a juvenile. They have about 15 live young, which means they don't lay eggs. They're just like a human being, their babies come out alive. They're found mostly around the south and east coast of Australia. These are often found close to waterways, creeks and drains around here in local Adelaide. Probably the second most encountered snake us catchers are called to deal with, especially if you live close to our wonderful River Torrens. Such a great habitat for these. Their diet consists of frogs and the odd fish, and they love to eat the odd mice and rat as well. There's conflicting stories as to how many, if any, people have died from these in Australia, but tests show their venom is highly toxic. Either way, if you got tagged by a red belly, you'd suffer from severe muscle and tissue damage, and it's common that most victims of red belly bite suffer with an amputation down the track. Very, very nasty after effects from these. Another interesting fact about red belly black snakes is they've also been found in, with a blue or yellow phase belly. But this one here, as you can see, is obviously a red belly black. There are some videos that you might have seen on the internet, on YouTube and stuff, of various reptile handlers, what we call free handling these guys, that's with, without gloves. Do never attempt this. I wouldn't personally do it myself either. Animal handlers in, that, in circuses with trained animals, as we all know, they turn on their owners from time to time, and certainly a snake's gonna do that. If you see these guys, leave them alone. The most commonly found snake across the eastern part of Australia would be the eastern brown snake, also known as the common brown snake. They're responsible for most fatalities in Australia. They're extremely venomous, the second most potent venom in the world, which is number two to the Australian taipan. If you took hit from one of these and didn't seek correct medical treatment, sad enough, the situation wouldn't end well for yourself. These little guys grew up to be approximately six foot long, some a little longer or shorter. No matter how big they are, they can kill you. As you can see, this brown snake here is different to the juvenile I was just holding that had the really dark head. As they get older, they lose that dark head, 
Some juveniles even have bands and they'll lose them as they get older as well. Brown snakes have adapted well to being in the presence of human beings. They're often found around the homes looking for mice and rats, rodents that are attracted to garbage bins, pet food and water, bird aviaries, and snakes follow them in exactly the same places. Garden ponds and swimming pools are popular during summer, and depending on the season, they'll enter the home to keep either cool or warm. They often enter your home through open doors, weep holes and vents from the outside, and rodent holes. They travel in your walls, and up into your ceilings and search for food. Brown snakes are an egg layer. They lay around 30 eggs that normally start hatching between January and April. Often the eggs are laid in compost, garden mulch, or even in your garage. Just remember, big, little, whatever size they are, even before they exit their eggs, they will kill you. They usually rear up, flatten out like a cobra, and defend with their mouth open, ready to bite. It's a way that they defend themselves. The best advice I can give to you homeowners to keep your dog and cat water bowls away from your back door. Keep your grass mowed, your yards cleaned, and if you encounter a snake, leave it alone. Don't be a hero. Call your local snake catcher. If you're in South Australia, call us at Snakeaway Service, and myself or another qualified snake catcher will attend to your needs. What you've seen us do today on video, please don't attempt this yourself. It's highly dangerous and we are trained in what we do and licensed by the government. It's illegal to interfere with any wildlife, whether it's in your yard or out in the bush. So please leave it alone.